Hey everyone, I'm Tacitix, and welcome to Plotting and Scheming, covering Season 52, 3 vs. 3 Grand Arena Championship, Week 1. I am joined by my co-hosts, uh, TJ and Sasha Isha. Dagger has to sit this one out, couldn't uh, couldn't get him, could, couldn't make the schedules aligned for everybody, and yeah. So we've got notes from Dagger, we'll be able to include that. But uh, it is a pleasure to be here with uh, TJ and Sasha Isha. Uh, guys, uh, we're just minutes after the close of the season, or sorry, the close of the first week, and uh, I went 3-0, uh, very unexpected because it was a nail-biter into the last half hour there versus Barator in the third match. How are you guys doing? How'd you guys do? I'm good, man. The, 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 I will say this is one of the most exciting weeks I've had for a GAC. I'll go over the round one. Please. Um, in my, my one-point win against Gota, which mm. was by far like into literally the wee hours of us doing a like a, basically a back and forth playing chess. It was five dude, I had an amazing week. Fantastic. Yeah, I was I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. There's there's something to be said. And I know I know I think we're all gonna end up realizing it and saying it our own way, but there's this was more fun this week than I thought it was gonna be. How about you, Sasha? Oh, totally agree. I mean, it, this this was a lot of fun. I had uh, I had three really tough, tightly contested matches. I, I went three and zero this week, um, but like it, each of those matches could have gone the other way uh, with really great competitors uh, in a tough bracket. And uh, I just felt good about the the state of the meta, uh, like or better about it than I had been. It was mm -hmm. just fun to have some new puzzles, uh, fun to have some new toys. So uh, yeah. Really good. Uh, oh, yeah. Excited to dive into it with you guys in this episode. Fantastic. All right. Uh, well, let's go ahead and kick off segment one. What worked? Uh, TJ, why don't you kick us off? Tell us about the high notes. What what uh, what worked is for you where it needed to? Monster. Sid is when equipped properly, and, and me and Taz are in a heated debate on this, um, on one piece of it, but with a properly equipped Sid. And and where uh, Tass called the point out, and I think it's very true. Uh, high health stats on your DC. Uh, I kill and health steal. Uh I, I think health still's there, but I think having the high health is as a good point. Yeah. Uh, as a good equipment, but Tass called it out. I've been able to watch a lot of fights and the variation, and it's actually Brock who who led me to say he got to do it. So we were trying this out. Um, DTMG is is just being punched out um I, I will say uh go to set a weaker comp of dtmg so he put death on it and that was super easy mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. tass i fought tasses and we're not talking about chump change dtmg we're talking fully relic really good really good cron uh and i got close dude i literally got down to like my last life point but luckily dtmg died off and boom back to full health and i got to kill it um nice Sid is a lot of fun this week and killing a lot of things. Um, what else? What else worked? Dude, there's so many things that we're just trying out and, and working, right? Uh, JTR is getting to punch up, and that was punching up on Tass's team too. <laughs> JTR Cheese is back, so that was another fun one that's working. Um, working also, because of uh, watching Zareth, uh, I was able to get round one, it did work, and round two, it didn't for my own mistake. Uh, Seer... Uh, Malikos back on Ray feels pretty damn good. That was another strong um, round one that worked very well. And there's uh, <laughs> Did, you, you didn't to, run you into any cow comps with that, right? No OG cow on the team. Or no, it's not feeling like it. It's it feels like what you called out feels very true. And I'll let you talk. You know, I don't want to steal your thunder. No, no, by all means. Uh, everybody's on the cron, but everybody's on the cron right now, right? Mm -hmm. And my thought is, I fought. I've seen and fought both sides. Um, using Cal has worked, but I was following. I saw Zareth and got to see how he did it, so I was able to use Star Killer. It worked on the first one. Um, on Tassus, it did not, so we'll talk about that one. Um, other things that worked. Uh, everything else was. I was playing chess with everybody this week, so it was a lot of undermans and a lot of other tricky things I was having to do to um, to get my points out. So it's like everything else was the same. Uh, Bane. Um, Bane was being used for obviously various things, but for me, where I was not playing with it, now I, I, there's a good reason why. Um, 
was my counter for um, uh, Beck. Because Beck, people were setting various comps with Beck with these AoEs. I couldn't take chances with it. So it, it was just like, don't play with it. They're, they're super strong. They're going to kill you setups. Um, so Bane was killing Beck for me right now. But mm -hmm. obviously we know it's punching way up to like other GLs. Um, I think those are the highlights for what really did good this week. Fantastic. Good notes, though. Uh, Sasha, how about you? What worked for you this week? What was unexpected? Yeah. What was clutch? Yeah, yeah, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll try and cover some new ground because with, without without Dagger, we, we lose a little bit of our, our breadth or scope here. So um, stuff that, that, that isn't redundant with, with TJ here. Like, um, so I, I really enjoyed having Malgus on offense uh, this week. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'll say it just in terms of, like, the versatility and optionality and that, like, you could kind of go uh, the – Full Fifth Empire and bring your DR and BSF or possibly Malik in with him uh, and and punch high like I think it's like a Riva and a DTMG um, and then uh, potentially finding the matchups for him that weren't just dependent on the sort of top tier Sith Empire companions and being able to spare a separate like for example DR BSF Malik squad mm -hmm. and have Malgus so break it apart and get an extra offensive squad which in one of my matches I needed to do um, and it was still able to take something out that otherwise uh, was really likely to require a GL and that was uh, an opponent uh, Partick had set a uh, DR BSF Savage squad which is never easy to deal with yeah. um, mm -hmm. and particularly add some like pretty nasty Sith Kron on it and uh, <clears throat> Malgus didn't need his A-team to be able to still do pretty well. So that that was a nice, it was just kind of fun to play with some Sith optionality there. Um, another another thing that, uh, that I used three times uh, this week, like so in every match it had high utility, was Maul, ISC, and Gar. And, um, nice. you know, it, it means I'm not setting Maul with LV, but... Uh, the capability of that team is is really high. You know, with the Mandalore lead, there is a self cleanse for uh, you know the for each at each turn for one of those um, Empire Mandalorians, meaning they're going to be able to assist Maul when he starts ramping. So even if you're facing, for example, uh, a gas Crex fives and Crex opens up with that irresistible days, mm -hmm. it's going to be cleansed, and you're going to have somebody hammering down that 501st and Crex squad. I just found that really effective. I, I used it against the Keller and Beck squad uh, as well, um, and I went into that flinched, like really nervous, because I think that Keller and Beck squad, if I recall, was Beck, uh, Gas, and Cam. And I'm like, okay, it's wow. and it had, by the way, 40 stacks of Padawan lessons on it. Mm. It had 100% protection cron, plus the 100% offense. And I'm like, if these guys like, are given like 10 seconds alone with me, they're going to tear my squad apart. Yeah. But um, uh, and I think that was it. Uh, or maybe it wasn't Cam. Maybe it was GK instead of Cam. But the, the point mm. being, like, Maul is able to hammer through quickly enough that the opposing team doesn't stand long. Uh, so that was really nice. Um, a couple other things uh, that uh, I'll call out. I got to use Tuscans on offense. I uh, used it against a Gas Crex, uh, not sorry, Gas, a Rec Crex 5 squad. And it's just, you know, sort of taking advantage of okay. uh, the absence of an AoE on the opposing team, or meaningful AoE. I mean, Crex has one, but it's it's not the main source of damage. And I think they, they rectilated... Uh, a Tuscan Raider or Tuscan Raider clone probably three or four times in that match, but I just, you work them down and you ultimately take them out. And I think it was like a 55, 56. Um, so that was just mm. nice. I hadn't used Tuscans on offense. I um, mean, with the absence of the Tuscan Cron, it just felt like they probably aren't going on D for me, although they've got viability there. Um, like, spoiler, when it comes to it didn't work, I dropped on a Tuscan squad this week. So um, then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, throw, I'll, I'll actually throw at least one more out. Then that is please, please. C. God bless C. And the reason I, I say that, and I know you guys have had the same experience, is like I would have nightmares about Bo Katan Mandalore if it wasn't for C. Because I, I, I still am pretty anxious about taking C in some combination. It's going to be like a C watch or just a C stat. Like I'm going in with as many companions, even though they're just going to be fodder. Uh, 
I want C to go in with others, but C at least takes out Bo-Katan because mm-hmm. I am terrified of getting just hard stops on a, on a BKM squad. So, um, yeah, those are, those are the ones that jump out. I, I have some others too, but like I, I thought, uh, I, I thought those would be good ones. How about you, Jeff? Yeah. Um, well, GG Stat Magna I encountered exactly once with the with the full. Uh, I guess what I would consider the proper setup. The three is kind of arguable whether or not you want the stacking offense and speed or you want the potency tenacity three. But it's the target uh, target lock level six and the stat nine, and yeah, slacker solo fifty eight. It's you know it it you know with stat there it does more of what it was already doing, and slacker is just unbothered. Um, Finzori Rose. That's been catching people out this season, and I've gotten a couple holds with it myself. Uh, Afra BT1 triple zero mine is uh, fifty six, so I was delighted to see that still works. I haven't fought one with resistance hero Finn, I think, so we'll have to see how that goes sometime this season. Um, Kellerin Mace Ahsoka, I know a lot of people are going to be thinking about what to do with that. That was on a bottom front wall for me, and I didn't mess around with it. I just took in Seer, 56. Um, what else was interesting? Yeah, any Ray composition I encountered. That's set 13, set 14, Holdokron, Raycron, offense level 6, resistance uh, 100% tenacity level 6, doesn't matter. Bane set was about 54 banners every time. Um, and then against Trench Dooku Watt. So I, I learned my lesson from fighting TJ that uh, having my, my Sidious on paper is just round the clock better than TJ's. It's more health, more speed, more potency, more offense, um, whatever. Like, it's just, it's everything that you would care about. But the difference is, is my Kron has nowhere near the health uh, and the health steal on week one. So I've since rectified the problem. But my Sidious versus uh, DTMG will cover in a moment. But I had a success. So I didn't tr- attempt that, like round three. Um, and I went in with Sidious against Trench Dooku Watt. It was a sweat, guys, because Tank Tech got on to Dooku. And yeah, Dooku was quick, um, and he was just, he just kept uh, being able to, you know, heal himself, and uh, he stabilized, and it was like two solid minutes of me just sweating, watching the two of them trade blows. And in the end, we just, I'm sitting there thinking, he's faster, he's so much faster than this guy, why, why are we not actually getting one chance to loop him? And then it finally happened where we were able to get him up to five stacks. He took a turn, fell over. Um, so that was a bit interesting. Let me see if there was anything else. Yeah, a people couple need... questions. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go, go ahead, TJ. Do, do yours. No, 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 do yours. Go ahead, because then I'll, I'll come up with my yeah, point I, about I, it. Yeah, I was just I was going to ask two things. One, no, whether you think Hellsteel is really necessary on a Sidious Datacron, because the, the level nine, as a stack, um, because the level nine gives him two hundred percent health steal, right? Uh, and and I actually was finding I I, I brought Sidious against a um, a a trench Dooku Watt team as well, mm-hmm. uh, and the learning I had out of it was it it was my offense that I wanted to make sure I had. Like I, I was a little anxious about timing out because Tank Tech in my case Tank Tech was on trench. And what I found is I had to move to auto basic. That just did more damage that way. Whoa. But the health steal wasn't as much of a concern for me. As long as there was sort of like a sufficient sufficient health base, it was having like offense enough so that I could just basic down and, and sort of outpace their regen. Um, so that was one thing. Like you you, you believe you you're a believer in health steal then versus no versus I offense. am a believer of health. Um, like like TJ says like fifty five percent. And I rolled, so I had a, about about the same. And I, I think I, I also like, have I did something week one, like just to clear that up. I added I added more, so I had great. less than that. So to even to your point, um, I would think you need a minimum of forty percent to really be effective, uh, depending R eight R nine 
where you're going to be at because that that does put in. But uh, I think a minimum of about 35 to 40. Don't go any lower than that for mm-hmm. what you're trying to achieve and where I'm punching up at. So I'll, I'll give my thoughts on it after everything I've watched. Um, but but go ahead. I know you had the other questions uh, for your Sasha. No, 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 good. Actually, you you go ahead, TJ. Go, right. go ahead. So so the way you have to play your uh, your this sit right. This sit is equitable to a um, a good wampa. It has its matchups where it's at, but I've watched where the fails can hit you. Uh, I'm not talking about yours, Tass. I think you called it out like expertly, right? Of uh, what was the real key pieces. But other people are trying to do these things and not thinking about the goal of the character and what the Kron is doing. Mm-hmm. The goal of trying to get to that five stack on so somebody dies, and then it's just a barrel effect, right? Uh, so people are trying to do this with teams that are bringing tenacity up or bringing things where you can't get the dots to do the job. So it's like, it's not just a, let's just take it in and go. But if you're taking against like you see uh, star killers, right? Just barrels over. You're seeing Afras barreling over. It's killing up into things that are doing else. Like I got the DTMG, but mine was super close um, and clutched out because of the health that I had on. Um, and again, I, like I said, Tass and I have talked extensively and I still want to do more testing on the level six, but, uh, I've even made more adjustments and I put more health on it because I really feel like that is a, what Tass said is a really good key piece, but it's, you need to put them to the right places and you do need to base it on how stat heavy you are when you walk into that fight, because you have to be prepared that it's going to get super close and, or, um, as Tass saw, it could just easily lose in one shot. You have to be prepared. Yeah, for that. and and a little health steal is nice. Um, right. Like I have something like thirty, thirty four percent something on it. Like it's not it's not a huge amount. Um, I don't know. I just felt like there were parts where I got uncomfortably low on health in the fight. To your oh, point, I got though. It. To your I point, though, through. Sasha, adding adding more offense onto the mods is probably more important than people think for. For the matchups where, like, con- consider that, like, the, the type of matchup where you're fighting an effect that's like a dispel, a passive dispel like tank tech is going to be fairly rare, but, um, it, like, that would be actually pretty difficult. I was thinking about what, what in the nightmare scenario of, like, I don't know, Trench Magna Watt, and what happens if tank tech, um gets on to Magna, something like that. Like a tank who you're really not going to just basic him and have him fall over, I don't think, kind of a thing. It's like, I wonder if you could end up getting jammed up with Sidious on something like that. Um, I don't know if you guys had any thought on that, but it's it's kind yeah, of... Yeah, I'll give you an example uh, of something that would be very tempting to take Sidious on, and if you don't have sufficient offense, I think you time out. And that would be, um, okay, a lot of people are using Malakos on offense, maybe with crew, maybe someplace else, i uh, sorry, maybe with Slacker or something like that. You know, it could, it has a, a lot of different potential homes. And so you'll occasionally see like a steer, crew, uh, fulcrum, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that may feel like it is safe as a target for Sidious, but the reality is you're never going to get five dots on fulcrum. You know, because she's uh, immune to dot, so they keep dropping off. And she regens and creates a protection up for herself with her basic. Um, and so if you can't really hammer hard, you're going to time out against a fulcrum with Sidious. I, uh, I've and, watched like, the fight. Go ahead. So I, I'm, I just oh, want to call this, this out. Okay. I've watched it. This is, I spent, this is why this week was so exciting. I have spent more time than I care to admit watching everybody's fights and seeing things in other people <laughs> because... <laughs> Because there was so much to learn. This set now is a monster for what like the uh, the theory crafting and way to put things together and what it does. A lot of new teams, a lot of new comps, and a lot uh, just like a lot of new uh, ways to place your defense and stuff to kill came out of this week a mm. lot. So I don't want to I don't want to steal anybody's thunder from the content creators, but I I can't stress it enough. You guys need to go check them out. There's a lot oh, that was going in. Uh, so your seer fight, I've watched it work. And I watched it not, and I watched why it didn't. I'm not going to steal it, yeah. and I'm not going to give it away, mm-hmm. but I watched it as a 50-50, as mm-hmm. where I'll give this in. When it worked, it got to the point where I felt it might have been, with the correct setup, it would be okay, but also got sort of lucky in that we got the timing to right, just right, 
and a character died off. And once that started, fight was done. But I also watched it cleanse off. And to your point of exactly what you just said, Sasha, couldn't get it. Boop. There it went Sid. Mm. So it's like yeah. these punch-ups of where you're doing it, you need to play um, how and when you're going to use Sid smartly. Don't just think it just blindly go in with anything. That is not the case with this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I think our I think our overall impression is it's like you need enough health to to qualify for the fight because if you take so much damage and God forbid you're fighting anybody that can go under stealth and hit you and you don't get a counter attack, you you have to be able to take some hits that aren't that you're not going to yes. be able to answer. Um, and if you're not, you're going to be in some trouble. And then. You know, a, a little health steal feels like it's good, but I, I think the more I think about it, maybe having offense is better because you already have um, health steal baked in, per Sasha's comment. So I'd say, I think I'd say offense isn't a bad secondary, but I, for me, for me, I would not go like I know TJ. You said forty percent is probably the floor. I don't know, man. Um, I think I think I'd shoot for fifty. I think like, I mean, you can I, try it, and I'm sure people will have success like outside of the top fifty, top one hundred. But I'm just thinking about the the people with the really cracked out stuff. Why do you think I went up to fifty five? And that, but the reason I say that is saying, this week, man. I I That's this week saying. I walked in with forty or a forty or five or something like that, and then talking to you and watching the fights, I rolled it again. Mm. Um, I happen to have a really good health steal. Uh, I think level six, uh, wherever it's at. Like we we looked at it, right, Tass? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my rolls. I got super lucky in one of my rolls, just to be easy. Yeah, you had I got some basically. I got like basically a fifty percent health steal on just one like item, right? Like my level mm -hmm. six is fifty percent health steal. Mm -hmm. Rest is health. So mm -hmm. it's I'm not discounting what Tass is saying, but in playing it enough and seeing everything, um, one. I believe everything has tiered out depending on what you get. So Star Killers and Afras are going to be a lot easier. If you're really trying to punch up to these teams where you're taking a GL if you're not going to win or it's going to clutch out like DT and G or some of these other ones, you need to have this decked out. You need the relics, you need the good modding, and you need the good stats on your DC. Otherwise, take it to a lower tier, EG, which is funny enough. Afra, Star Killer, these others, they're going to die off pretty fast because they can't cleanse. If you're trying to fight the fight, then you really need the stuff. Very fair. Very fair. Yeah, um, it, it really makes me go back and forth on whether or not to actually Relic 9 Sidious. Because you I know wouldn't. as soon as the crown has gone, you're just going to be... I, eh. I wouldn't. I think R8 is a great hold. Because yeah. Sidious still has fight for like us in the, you know, in the gauntlet. r is a great hold, in my opinion for an attacker, right? There's some mm. damage there. There's utilization in TW. There's an Omicron. So mm. in the gauntlet, I think you're fine. I think you should roll that DC. If you're really going to play with us at the top and sweat it out, you need to roll your DC correctly. And you mm. need good mods on your, your Sid for now. They could probably go elsewhere. But I don't see why you need to R9. If you're super whaling and cracking, you probably already got an R9. And it's not there. But I don't, I'm not going to R9 mine. But I will keep... I will probably keep tweaking my Sidcron for as long as Sid is here because it's it is a it is so much fun. Yeah, I might yeah, be trying to get more you, demanding yeah. of the mods too. Sorry, go, what yes. was that, Sasha? No, I I just it's not an it's an R nine that I will want or wish I had for the next three months plus. Yeah, but it's not what I'm gonna do. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I I kind of yeah, I'm kind of in the same spot. All right, well, um, we do have great notes here from Dagger here. So about what worked for him, Sidious versus DTMG and Seer. Um, I, I would have to assume that's like Malikos crew, Malico, uh, Malikos Cal something. Malikos Fulcrum, who knows? Afra. Yeah, I have seen a, I've seen a Malikos Fulcrum, by the way. So I have seen nice. it die. I've also seen it fail. <laughs> so that's yeah, because it sounds like he would have to survive a really brutal amount of damage. You, the fight, so weird enough, the fight, just to call it out again, I'm not, go watch the creators. It yeah. ended up being a, a match back and forth between uh, Sid and ATF. It was not Malikos, it was not Seer. The ATF, and then they lapped the ATF to get the dots for her to die. Okay. But was the fight long? Yes. 
That that's tricky, yeah, because she's constantly dispelling. See, you that's another one it. of those matchups. The passive dispelling, man. I'm telling you, yep. man. Yep. That's there's gonna be that's that's gonna be kind of. I was uh, I was talking about it. I think with each of you at different points, but in a whole bunch of other places as well. He is, you know, how, how we've said forever now that Wampa's the floor for, you know, you, you want to set a defense that's better than what Wampa can take on. Yeah. Yeah. And now Sidious is now raising that floor up, you know? So you, everybody's going to be really thinking about what you can actually do about that. Mm-hmm. Um, Dispel is king versus him. And then otherwise you'd have to have, you know... Hell steal or offense of your own to overwhelm him. Um, in addition to that dispel, it's kind of fun to think about. All right, other notes here from Dagger. Afra clutched out a win versus Saw. I don't recommend it as it was awful and required a double revive with Afra standing versus Saw, Bays, and Chirrut. So all three of them were, were alive at, at different points. I fought a Levi with uh, ITB B28 Fury and cleaned it with the standard Chimera comp. But Mark Six did get to one hit KO somebody, so it wasn't nothing. Just no damage in the initial lineup, so you were under no real pressure. Uh, so getting to Chimera ult was easy. Uh, Seer worked versus Ray. Star Killer versus Ray. Both were smooth, but I've got to take stock of the level three and level six combo on Ray. What didn't work? Um, I think that's where we'll turn to next. So DJ. Let's hear about it. What didn't work? Right. And I'm I'm just okay. gonna I'm just gonna kick back. I'm put my feet up a little bit here. Nah, yeah, this guy. This is, fuck this guy. His hat's ugly too. It's gross. It smells funny. Oh. All right. So so here's here's what didn't work. So we tried it. Um, and again, I, I had to go through a whole bunch of modding wrecks for this right because this really this really tried things. So first round against Gota, everything was working just fine. What I decided to try was the Gar ISC incorrect modding. So we already know where that goes. What I thought about when I talked out, because there was no point where I feel like I could try it, I tried Piet as the third on there. It didn't change the fight. Because of the potency, and again, it was just I didn't have it there. I had stock stuff, but I wanted to try to see how it would be with this gas because of gas being a monster right now, with Jedi being back in full force. No. Nope. So part of my remodding was Gar IC has now been corrected for this week, hopefully to a good point. If not, I have plans. Um, that was one of my many, many, many changes that are happening this week. Um, other things that didn't work. We're going to go to Tass's fight. Tass's was a lot of shit that didn't work. But I, uh, it was actually really good because, man, did I learn a whole bunch from Tass's fights. Um, Ray. So Seer, Malakos, and Starkiller, what I thought walked in, I took... So... Normally what happens in the fight is Seer pretty much gets targeted, right? So something like that, like they're targeting the weakest character. Um, did not happen this way with Tass's. And Tass had really good modding setup, of course, this Tass. Um, but also the Kron, which made me go reroll my Kron. He had about 30% uh, offense tacked in to his team on the Kron itself with already high offensive, which I know Tass has talked about several times. Um, and man, they just beat the hell out of Star Killer. And what happened was, uh, in two turns in a row, my Seer she used the uh, the revive mechanic from Malakos, and then some big hit. I don't remember which it was. It was either uh, Ben or it was Ray. But boom, both Star Killer and Seer dead. And then Malakos was just left alive. Mm-hmm. Like had me my my jaw dropped at how fast and how much damage got hit, where it, like just blew me out. So that um, means they'd each been saved once by that point in yeah. the fight. But they were just beating on Starkiller. So it was one of those things where it was the perfect storm of the, where they were going. They were leaving Malakos alone and just beating the shit out of Starkiller all mm-hmm. fight. Armor shreds. And then so they popped Seer. What I had is I took like 80% deflection, just thinking of Ben and the, uh, uh, the amount of times he's going to go. It didn't matter. Um, and I was, but because I took the light side protection up when I, when I think I really should with two dark side characters, should have taken doubt. Uh, but again, lessons learned. It's okay. It was a good fight. Um, the other one that got me, and I'd seen it and I wanted to try it, uh, GG Stat. Taz said the really good Kron with level six with the target lock. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I even recorded the fight and I showed Tess like what happened. So I, was, I saw it was super fun. It was crazy, man, how fast and it's like it's really good to see. And uh, if anybody Actually, wants to Actually, yeah, if you don't up, mind, I can pull I can pull it up uh off No, of this show it because it it's up. a forty five second fight and while I'm talking you'll see how fast it's going. I don't mind if people see it because it was yeah. good learning. Did you DM that to me or is that in scheme team? Uh no no, I um I think I DM'd it to you, so check yeah. there. Uh, but I think it's worth watching, and anybody who gets this video, you're gonna you're gonna get yeah, a kick out of it. Okay. So Hold what? On. So what happens is because the target lock starts and they push into the target lock, um, I took Ad Rat, right? I'm thinking, all right, it's gonna be fast enough. I didn't get like one turn. My team got obliterated so fast I couldn't keep up, and it got loaded. Here's what makes this funny: is round two, I was like, I need to take something. I need to get some points back because of the drop. So I took a solo LV on a loaded team. Don't do that. I learned very quickly mm. on it was so gross at how bad it was that my LV he looked like a sad boy <laughs> getting bullied in the schoolyard is what it is what it felt comparable to it was Man. just like it just obliterated me so I had to overkill it so I think I took gas or something like that but it was like yeah it let me really let me fun. show this here your fight on screen I don't know yeah. if you're looking in Discord I also have the OBS up there so you can see but yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you want to comment while it's going I'm about to Go play ahead. you'll it see because I was like I'm I was looking at all the steps to I see I don't know what if you're seeing do. this Sasha yep watch how fast this goes Sasha yeah don't blink don't blink <laughs> <laughs> so here we go so it starts it starts. They hit into the target lock, so they're gonna move fast, right? Watch, just watch. It's gonna. And I'm like, oh shit. Um, I probably need. Oh wait, that's gone. Fish man alone. Yeah, it looks like I want to forfeit. It didn't work. That was my fight. Yeah. So I was sad. I was I was a sad boy. So yeah. yeah. Um, what else didn't work? There's so much good stuff learned. Uh, so what I decided to try, and it didn't work. Uh, and where the second is gonna go long. Um. My thought was, and again, not correct level six, but I wanted to try GD Staff. Last season, I talked about it, and what I wanted to check out was that against Finn Zori. Now, again, mm. incorrect level six, but Staff with GG, and you get the bonus, and I'm like, all right, this is going to be fast. So I took it against Tass's uh, Finn Zori with the Rose, and this will be important why I say this. Um, without that level six and that turn meter, I got lapped. The reason I got lapped... It's Rose. So you remember, she, what she's doing is she's getting rid of the stuff. I couldn't keep up with the amount of cleanses going on. So, and again, and I wish I would have recorded it because this was such a good learning experience for this, with this round with Tass. Because, like, I'm going to lose. I don't mind losing the Tass. So let's see what we can learn. They, they lapped me so hard without that target lock being reapplied and hitting into it. I couldn't keep up. And they just lapped me and I was dead. They went at they hard targeted on uh, staff. So staff, not stop task. Staff. Thank you. Staff. Th thank yes. you. Thank and, you. And, and buck off. But I didn't make the they, rules for this language, by the way. You did. You did English hard language. All right. I couldn't do it, so I I loaded it bad. But it was good learning to note that I think with the level six target lock, I really feel like it's there because you can hit the target locks and stay ahead without that. And rows on the team, it's like. One, I don't think Sid's taking it because the cleanses are going to be there and you're getting tenacity up and all those things you're doing. I think it's got a hold. Um, and then the TM game. With that level six right now, with this, uh, the, the, the resistance are really hard to play around. And you have to be smart on what you're going to take in because of how it goes. And then, um, like I talked about one thing with Tass where Holdo on Finn and Zori, I had to fight that with, uh, and I had to take, I took Afra. I almost lost the fight because they start with foresight, so you have to play around the foresight start, and you have to try to kill everybody. And man, they were hitting, they were hitting hard. I believe so. That. These these resistance man in this setup is just amazing. Um, so that was one that didn't work. So let me go. In. Like I said, this was a good learning. Um, the other one I tried, and, and I still think it's there. And I'm going to call it again for task. Um, Gungans. And I have a point because I watched all of them do it, which is, again, go watch content creators. I wanted to try Gungans on Trench because we had watched mm. and we talked about it to see what it's going to do with Seth's, right? It's you, they can't hide from it. They can't stop. I don't care. Um, it did work for Arnold, but there was no Watt, so I, I had to leave that. But it didn't work for me, so I wanted to see where it was at with just a two-man, but I think it's there with a three. So I think Sep's days might be numbered, which is another thing we'll talk about. Um, I think that's all the good ones, Tess. 
But yeah, that, this this uh, and I didn't fill anything with uh, my last round. But yeah, well, oh, such a good week. Do. All right, well, good job in the last round there. Um, yeah, good fails though. Those were good good lessons, and I've got my own all cover here in a minute. But Sasha, let's hear about it. What uh, what let you down? What did you think was gonna so, work, and then it promptly did not work? Yeah, so I it, I had a pretty good offensive week. Uh, the first two matches I did not have any drops. The last match I dropped uh, two ground attacks, uh, and there were learnings out of them, I would say. Um, but uh, one was uh, actually each of them were counters that I'd used multiple times successfully. So I went in with like a high degree of confidence and was surprised that they failed. So the first one against Tuscans, and like uh, as I mentioned earlier in the show, like you know, hey the 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 Tuscans still have like some sort of like towards the end of like the line like maybe like 14th 15th strongest team you could set out there and in Kyber one as a defense and a little bit of viability if you don't have the right matchup mm -hmm. but I've been using Bam IG11 Queel uh, with the Bam Cron the uh, you know the level three that gives you uh, two percent damage on uh, percent health uh, that you know the level nine for Bam the increased offense on level six for them. And I'm like, all right, this is really set. And I used to, I don't know, gosh, a half dozen times now uh, against Tuscans, uh, even with the Tuscan prawn. And so I felt really confident, went in uh, in my last match, and uh, it was a Tuscan prawn that was, uh, it was a level nine from set 14 with uh, a good amount of offense on it. And it also had, uh, I think, the 15% offense when an ally dies. And uh, I was able to get Bam's uh, uh, birds off and killed Warrior and the original Raider, but uh, the clone Raider and Chieftain took out my Bam. And at that point, it was like on auto for another like four minutes. And I was not, I think I killed that clone Raider uh, once, but wasn't able to get the uh, Chieftain out. So that was disappointing, but you know, it didn't yeah. work. It was just actually learning out of that was that Tuskins, I think if they're really, you want them well modded, obviously, uh, and I think well modded in this case is hitting really hard. You want them, uh, uh, you know, certainly Raider, but also uh, Warrior hitting hard on offense mm -hmm. and really like aggressive offensive cron. I'm a big believer in that and, and it's done. Ah. The other one, yeah, so like I like it was like high that. offense cron. It, like it wasn't doubt, it wasn't anything like that. It was just purely it was like it was it was decently high offense then uh the other one that failed me was actually a jmk versus ray you know there are cool ray puzzles being created with all these resistance options right yeah. mm -hmm. uh and this was uh a ray ben and holdo with uh what i i think most people would want on those types of crons you know the level six take everybody under 100 percent before you can take anybody out uh, and then the Holdo 09, which is, uh, you know, formidable. And so I had, uh, I, had a, I had a good match on that. My, I suspect my tactics were flawed. They worked in, uh, I think, each of my previous two matches, but they didn't work here. And to be specific, what I, what I tried was, um, <clears throat> so I brought in JMK, in my previous two matches, been JMK, Cat, and... Uh, Mace. This time it was with GK because I had set Mace on D, uh, just trying out some different defenses. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> you know, I would reset Cat's cooldowns, wait until Holdo goes. I know I can't kill her, but once she goes and instant speed immunity is up, I would do a cat jump on her to take her down to one percent health, mm -hmm. uh, and then have uh, JMK uh, put heal immunity on her. And then take her out, and then it's the three on two, and I sort of get them down. Whether I, I can't even recall if I had um, the prevent revives or the hundred percent data from, but I felt very good about all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I go through it, uh, but the issue that I had is, again, it was a really well modded, really well croned um, uh, resistant team, a uh, ray team, and it had a good amount of offense. And they focused down my cat really quickly, like. Mm -hmm. uh, Took her out once, and she got sort of the savior thing once, and then Ben finished her uh, before I was able to take hold of her out. And so I was left in a spot where I, um, and this is another lesson, I guess the one little thing I did right that was the silver lining, 
is I was sitting there with, at that point, just my JMK, and I'm clearly going to lose, and I can't kill anybody. But um, what I what I just kept doing was have JMK just continue to ramp, you know, sort of calling himself to assist going after Holdo, and then letting it time out at a point when Holdo was under 100% health, Ray was under 100% health, and I could bring something else in, and I don't have to get them under again. Um, and it allowed me to clean it up. But, uh, yeah, that was that was rough. That was definitely rough. A lot of the other learnings I had in terms of what didn't work this week, like I, I, I just want to, um, without dagger here, I'll, I'll say it like, uh, you know, give, give props to your local content creators. Like this was a fantastic week for Swaga, like GAC content. Right? Like this was, it's new stuff. So it's really fascinating. There's a lot of interesting matchups because so much shaking up with Datacrons, uh, and uh, you know some new characters, a lot of other stuff, and then we had these incredible matchups like you know this past Friday, uh, you know Tassinix and TJ matching up. We had Zareth and Fatal. There was yeah, just, it was a great I mean, these were just phenomenal, like really, really good content. So you know, even though I couldn't catch everything real time, like most stuff, like I just tried to make sure, like I got you know the the stream after the fact, after the fact, like. Uh, you know, watching Calvin, watching uh, Sanchita, watching whatever I can, um, and listening to uh, Kim stuff as well. There's just a lot of good stuff out there. So <clears throat> while I only failed twice myself, it's really because I, I had the benefit of like learning from a lot of other people who were, you know, the pioneers uh, out there doing it first who ended up with the arrows in their back. Very fair. Uh, for, for my own part, I mean, I already kind of spoiled it there about the Sidious, uh, letting me down. Um, Keller and Ahsoka and Mace. So I was thinking that I was going to treat it proper here against TJ. And I, I went in with Treya, Nihilus, and Savage with the Daukron, uh, emphasis on some crit avoidance. You know, we did what we could trying to plan our way going into it. And... It looked like it was going okay at first, but then they started to really build up stacks of uh, Padawan lessons, and the damage became much more severe. And then suddenly Trey uh, got knocked out, and then it was uh, a weak, you know, Savage and Nihilus sitting there, and then and then uh, Savage was gone, and then it was just Nihilus, and then Taunt uh, dropped just a moment off of mace and i was able to pop kel before they closed him out too. close uh clean that up with veer's dark piet but that was um that was one of the few risks i took in the fight versus tj and i thought i was like man i feel like this has a decent chance like they've got a lot of assist stuff going on especially with ahsoka there uh all the attacks out of turn i thought i was just gonna gobble them up and it was not like that uh, so yeah, the, the DTMG, you know, using the Sidious there, you just need more health in the Kron. It's, um, it's clearly not so dependent on, uh, as dependent on the mods as it is on the Kron. Uh, other fails here. So yeah, just today against Barator, Gas Arc Echo, man, I finally got caught. Use Gar ISC, and they finally caught me with, uh, once, once Gas stood up after I had unceremoniously murdered his friends... Uh, he stuck the one days onto Gar, and just that one days was enough to shut down the train, and they weren't able to close him out. Um, so I just cleaned that up with Wampa. And then, yeah, uh, I share your pain, Sasha, against a set of Tuscans. So I took the risk of having, like, a Maul, Bam, Bow team on defense alongside, like, a separate Lord Vader team. It's like Lord Vader sorty ipd with ipd crumb um and so i didn't have the bam quill ig11 that worked well for me here in the first round versus tj so i decided to do boss dad bob uh dad bob boba and mando and this is with the mando cron this is with prod up on um level three right so yeah, they just bopped out Mando twice in a row. It was pretty ridiculous. We were just a couple turns away from getting contract, but it didn't end up working out. Um, had to withdraw. Got absolutely no one. It was really disappointing. Uh, I don't. Uh, he was running a Dalkrom, by the way. This isn't even talking about your scenario where you're you're tricking him out for offense. 
Uh, so it was just a gnarly situation. Went in with Leia, Drogon, and R2 to make sure that I would have the ability to land a large enough simultaneous blow to knock everybody out later in the fight. And that's how it worked for 35 banners. whoop de doo mm. Now, uh, as far as Dagger goes... For what didn't work for him, Night Sisters versus Finzori. The tenacity up level three just uh, he could he with that on their team he just couldn't get anything going. Uh, Malgus versus Riva. Once again, sometimes GI decides that BSF and or DR just don't need to be there. So it sounds like uh, the AOE is hitting harder than anticipated. Interesting. All right. Um, okay, well, let's move into segment three here. Standout defenses. Uh, TJ, let's hear from you. Who held the line? Um, for me, oh, I wish we had it still. Uh, the big ones that did it for me this week, um, uh, for, uh, round one against Gota, which again, I'm still going to call it the one of the most epic matches I've ever had. One point win at the very end. Mm -hmm. uh, literally chess match. So it was D team G held and uh, Aiden. Aiden were those were my two standouts. Got one hold each. I'll have to call that a win. Um, Keller and Beck against you was a, a really strong. It's just because the the it's just a monster. Beck is such a monster right now. It's like you you don't know where to place him on the team so it's like it it needs something but it doesn't need much and if as long as it's properly built it's just there goes your team do, do you so, think it makes much of a difference uh whether or not it's ahsoka or gas in there no i I've like the idea of the gas i've seen i don't think i think my Ahsoka was cool with the idea and i again let me let me preface this i stole the idea from Tass. i didn't have a lot of time and i didn't feel very good Tass's idea was to put this team i wanted to see what it was doing live so that's why i put it in there this way um, I think an AOE is definitely needed on the team somewhere. That's why mm. I think Gas is such a great tool on the Beck team. But just like I think JKA there is a great tool, as long as you're putting AOEs on this team with that Beck level 9, you are in a beautiful place. Interesting. Um, okay. I, I don't – if you – my problem is we've talked about it, and I'll tell you one where I, I told these guys to. There's JTR is back with the cheese. Uh, this level six is just so good for the resistance and that if you put the right team who can stealth out, um, which is in my history if you want to go check it out, but mm -hmm. you put that third character who can't get hit, you can cheese out teams right now. So it's still back for what JTR can do and resistance in general. Um, other standout will be against Shooting Star, which was another efficient player, uh, but it caught out uh, – <laughs> Luckily enough for Tass, he'll say it's Finn, Zori, and Rose. Hey, my only hold. My, man. my only hold. I put it back in there thinking because – but it was a good level. It was a good cron. It no was doubt. the level six was correct. But, yeah, that just that – my only hold. And I won, I think, by 40 or something banners. I had a win, which would be, guess what, the drop that was done on the Finn. So, yeah, Beautiful. these these characters right now with these crons are definitely doing their work as far as what they're catching. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, Sasha, how about you? Your defensive standouts. You know, um, it's interesting, having chatted with a couple of my opponents, it was just uh, it was a very fun week. You know, I had uh, I Brilliant Zid, uh, I had uh, I, Renee and Pardek, and then, mm -hmm. um, so I caught up with a couple, two of the three of them, and, uh, like, I actually think that my standout was uh, was probably uh, at least in, in one of those two matches and possibly the other. It was a squad that didn't get a hold. You know, it's a lot of it is about what you set in the bottom front and what it happens to draw out. And in this case, it's just like TJ was thinking it was Keller and Beck, uh, and it was setting Beck out there with. Uh, and I mixed up my combo because I was just kind of curious over the week to see mm -hmm. how you know various uh, iterations would perform and. Uh, in at least one of them, it drew a JMK counter, like because I, I think I put like gas and cam, or I put gas and mace, or something that was you know like not screwing around. And it's with a, a good KB Datacron that had I think sixty percent protection and twenty percent offense, mm -hmm. like so in a hundred percent on level six. So it was going to hit like a truck. 
And understandably, you know, people are kind of fishing around for what's the right counter. But by drawing uh, uh, a JMK up front, it kept the, the opponent from being able to take out Jabba cleanly in the back. And so while Jabba may seem like the standout, it's actually, I think, Keller and Beck. Uh, so that, that was the difference maker on it. Um, then, uh, you know, I, it was, uh, there, there were a, a few other squads that had nice, I think, important holds for me. Um, I had a, a Finn Zori Resistance Hero Finn squad that uh, was effective. I'll have to see the history, but if I had to guess, um, that uh, they stopped something, might have been Night Sisters, and then probably drew out uh, an EP Star Killer or some other counter that was going to be needed elsewhere and caused, uh, you know, sort of a, a ripple effect of heartache for an opponent. And then um, <clears throat> I, I, I got to say, because I think this is like the eighth time in the last nine uh, weeks that I, I've said it, God bless Trench. Like Trench again got, uh, I think, uh, maybe it was only one hold this week, but it was in, in a week where it was pretty darn important uh, for there to be a, a hold. So Trench did well. <clears throat> I am not completely sold that the Trench Datacron, uh, even with its optimal rolling of uh, level 3, 6, and 9 and solid stats, is better than Doubt. I'm not totally sure. I think in some cases Doubt may even be better for Trench. Mm. But um, but I set the Trench Datacron, and I'll be curious to dig through some of the .gg history yes. as to what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th those were the ones that, that stood out. Um, and then, uh, I just want to say, like, I... like. Um, we'll come back to it a little bit more, I think, but it was just a lot of fun having a Datacron set uh, that is touching on some really broad factions like Jedi and Resistance and Sith mm -hmm. because it enables combinations that are way less like simplistic cookie cutter. Everybody's doing the same thing. Yeah. Like TJ's talking about like, oh, hey, there's these cool things you can do with Resistance. And I feel like I barely touched on it. In each match this week, I set on my bottom front wall um, a squad that would always been afterthoughts. It was JTR, BB-8, and Holdo. So I did not set Ray with Holdo. Mm -hmm. And I did that because I'm just like, that Holdo Datacron is beastly. If it's not handled correctly and thoughtfully, you can get stuck behind it. And there's Foresight and Turn Meter flying like crazy with that JTR, BB-8, Holdo combo. So maybe I will get, let's talk, I talk about Keller and Beck, maybe I'll get an opponent... Um, who's really sort of grasping for the right counter that over, over spent on it. I have smart opponents. I doubt they did. They both shot it each time. But I just love that this Datacron set has that. So, like, in terms yeah. of defenses, I think there's a lot of, like, raw material that's, like, still to, to really be refined into great options out there. And I, I'm excited to go through the .dg history when it's available. So how about you, Taft? What about the defenses? What stood out? Yeah, so I mean, uh, TJ and I have already, from different sides, already covered the ones that held with uh, in his match. My GG Stat Magna, uh, Finzori Rose, and then Ray Swolo Holdo. So those were the key holds. Um, and after that, he was just experimenting, so it doesn't really matter what those outcomes were. Uh, as far as key holds for this one round, let's see. I think it was two places. Yeah, two, yeah, all right, so Rex Crex 5's got me a hold, and and that's the thing, is it's like, I'm I'm loath, I guess I should be less loath to set Gas Arc Echo, um, if you have, you know, if I'm having a, a Jedi 100% uh, offense, defense, level 6, um, high offense, I would say, right? Really high offense, that would be... The best thing I could do for myself is putting the highest offense Jedi Cron on Gas Arc Echo and maybe setting that down if I wanted to stretch my value and have, you know, a distinct team and then I'll just put Ahsoka in with Kelleran and Mace, something like that. But uh, Rex Crex 5s is still a problem and it's still not to be underestimated. So fair enough. And then DRBSF Savage. I, I know you said earlier, uh, Sasha, you take it seriously as well you should. Um, it's rare that I've been setting it here in threes lately. So I'm glad either he didn't expect it or he didn't have the right thing for it. But he ended up withdrawing and then cleaning it up for 34 on the second go. So we use something very proper. Maybe he tried. Maybe he was trying to have an experiment. I don't know, but uh, not a whole lot as you would expect held this week. That's about it for me. 
as far as Dagger goes, Beck, Gas, and Snips uh, was a team that held for him once. Seer, Fulcrum, and Malikos, although it felt really bad pulling this um, off defense off of, uh, after round one because he wanted to have it, you know, for, for Ray uh, and stuff like that. And then moving Riva to the back wall paid dividends, right? So if you're, you know, you ha you know everybody knows about using Bane versus Riva and something of the kind. So how successful are you, you know, at drawing out Bane and and whatever it is that you're wanting to actually p potentially jam your opponent up on that back wall? That's that's about all the opportunity you have is a bit of gamesmanship on that bottom front. Otherwise, it's it's so narrow. Like I just Today's match that I that I just barely won versus Barator was by three banners. Three banners, man. That's one of the closest ones I had in a while. So it's it's razor thin out here. All right, guys. Uh, lessons learned, and uh, we'll transition right into the final thoughts after because I know TJ you had to get going sooner than later, so we'll try and wrap this up nicely. Um, yeah, go ahead, man. You go first then, TJ, about, uh, what were your lessons learned from this week? Oh, Other than the ones you already covered, like just in summary and brief. Oh, there's so many, dude. Uh, this week, like, like I've got seven to 10 new mod changes that are being done. Even more DC changes that are being done. Level threes and sixes are getting crazy rerolls. Um, way more money than I care to admit on <laughs> what had to be done but it but it needed to be done for to be competitive right now they they, they need these changes everything is very um effective in what it's doing and it's mm -hmm. very meticulous on um, what you have to be looking at so there's a lot going on with this set which is great right it's making the game fun it's bringing new challenges um it's true making sure that your stuff is in line it's just going to be money those, those are my biggest things right like i've got like, I look like the dude from uh, It's Always Sunny. And I've got hmm. points out to here and points out to there, and I'm smoking, like, 16 cigarettes at the same time trying mm -hmm. to talk about the the conspiracies that are going on because it's that crazy right now. Um, so lots of changes, lots of moves, and, again, so many things to watch and so many people doing so many new things to try to get it out there. And what can it do? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I am excited to see what GG data looks like after week one because I – I don't think we scratched the surface of what it's going to be like. So I think it's going to take the two weeks just to be able to even get something relevant. I agree. I think, you know, everybody wanted to do some testing, but particularly up in our neck of the woods, you're also not trying to lose either. So right. there were limits to how far you could really yep. push it. Um, very fair. Sasha, how about you? Lessons learned, takeaways. What do you got yeah, going into week two? I, I, I'm I'm really I'm excited about the state of the game. I guess uh, if I was going to be goofy, I could say Misa a little worried that you know the Gungans are going to come onto the board now, and uh, I suspect they are a really effective offensive squad. Um, so I think it's probably going to shift stuff back uh, mm -hmm. once, uh, like in the next week or two, where at the you know, for the the whale accounts, you're going to start seeing um, having those as options. Uh, but <clears throat> I, I agree with TJ, and I kind of like this is similar to the excitement I was sharing a few moments ago of like it's just like this really rich vein of options that we have across these different factions, like the Jedi, whether like it's it's you know the Qui Gon Jinn, um, you know, put Kit Fisto under there, put some other stuff like trying coloring back with the variety of options we've got and then the resistance ones i would say like i just would encourage people to try stuff that you haven't seen try stuff that maybe isn't showing up in histories um because the natural we have enough options that i think we might be able to delay the sort of natural order and progression of things we've got which is that week one everything seems new by tuesday or wednesday week two everybody's sort of mined through the history and the like Five, three to five new things that were there people discover hard counters to because they're on .gg. Yeah. Um, and then they start almost this sort of rote process of, oh, okay, everybody, if you have this, use that counter. I think that there's enough variation with this that people can keep sort of moving the target, make it harder, uh, and say like, oh, well, people know exactly how to take out this version of Keller and Beck squad or mm -hmm. this version of the Resistance squad 
I bet that there are variations of it that are like substantial, like make a difference on how it performs that aren't in that history yet. So I'm excited to see that. Like I'm hoping that keeps the West wild for one more week kind of Mm -hmm. thing, you know? Uh, So that's, that's, uh, that, that's, that's where I am, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun right now. No, I respect that. That's uh... can I add? Can I add one thing? No, please. All right, I just want to call it out. And while while Sasha said it, and I've also brought it up for your Gungans, and Tass and I talked about this, and I'm not going to put everything out there. It is not just set it and forget it, and it wins. I believe you have to have a very set of a uh, very specific set of circumstances for the the Gungans to do the work. I'm not going to call it out. But for anybody who gets to listen, don't just think it is you get to take them in and they're going to win. They have things in their kit that kill steps, yes. But if you're not paying attention to everything, right. I think you will not win. So I'm that, just giving the safety the real net. question yeah. is for the it, very few people that have actually all three characters and have mm-hmm. them, you know, quote unquote, properly set up. It is any separatist team safe on defense, and That's, is that and does that matter when there are legitimately two of them that are meta defenses with this cron set? Uh huh. It's it's like I said, and I I told Tass when I played it, I didn't get to record it, but we got to watch it, and I think it's there. I'll give one. If you're taking against trench, and most teams are going to do trench and Dooku as the setup, mm-hmm. Dooku's first move is going to be stealth. The first person to actually attack is going to be Trench. So if your character, who you want to stun, was, again, with the right cron. So, again, this is this is key stuff to look at when we test it. You have potency on a data cron. You can add the potency to the point because of the checks that are going to be there to make sure everything's going to land, everything's going to do what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Everything else that's going to land, as long as your character is going in front, so it'll be like Tarples, or it'll be the new one, who's stunning everybody, as long as you're getting in front of Trench, you're going to lock him down. And then the fight's off. And I just watched uh, Arnold do it. There was no Watt on the team. It was Trench, uh, I think, Dooku, and Django. He got in front, like I talked about, and the team died. And he got a 58 with the two-man Gungan team. So I'm, I'm telling you, it's, this is 100% true. And this was a what I would call an adequate or okay uh, Trench Datacron. Poop. Poop. 58 mm. by some Gungans. So Man. if you think I'm playing where it's like, no, but you have to be in front so that Trench can't do his Trench things. If he, if he can't go, what does it matter? And you've got mm-hmm. good banners. Boom, done. Okay. So to- totally agree. Like I, First, like to go back to me saying I was a little worried. I think they're offensively strong. I don't know Gungans at all. I never mm-hmm. have kids. But I, I do. don't have them yet. This is the thing, so, though. Uh, yes, DJ does. So listeners, listen to TJ on that. It's apparently not pushing an I win button. But what I do want to add here that these things, this is what makes me excited, though, is like, okay, so some predator is coming into the ecosystem that will just tear up separatists on defense. Mm -hmm. Well, think about that. That's that's awesome opportunity in my mind, because um, we all have talked about like trench with some of these data crongs, this trench separatists are really tough on D. That's what the AI running right mm-hmm. imagine what you can do if you pull your trench and they have like a bunch of like nice regenerative attributes like they can regain protection and other stuff mm-hmm. imagine you pull your trench over to offense and think about what you might be able to do and then substitute out something else that had been perhaps an offensive staple and put them on defense for you so i, I it does like to have more things moved to offense because we have so many offensive options but like i am convinced that there's some really cool stuff trench can do on offense right so now. So um, let me ask you this, Sasha. Let me ask you a hypothetical. Yeah. I, I, I had Tass watch this with me. We were looking at a review of a thing. Um, what if Gungans kill gas? I'm not calling it a great gas. But what if Gungans kill yeah. gas? Because what yeah. it is, 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 is this, this at shield least generator? In threes. They're at super, least in threes. For it, now. I'm yeah. not calling it. I'm, I'm just saying it's like people are setting, trying to put down like we gas, right? Because yeah. it's like it's still gas. Yeah. But what if yeah. your Gungans are killing that now? Mm-hmm. What happens? Where does this punch up? Because that generator is dope, man. I'm telling you, these kits are yeah. really good kits. And I know Tass yeah. is happy because he's a boss fan, right? Well, boss is actually <laughs> boss is actually dope. The Gungan team yeah. is actually really good. And the three characters that are coming out are actually really good as a threes team, which is nuts to see. Where, like, you know how we had to wait for uh, 
uh, for the Bad Batch to come out. We needed we needed Bad Batch Echo, right? We needed to see mm-hmm. the full picture. Yeah, they're already strong. Uh, Arnold, I love him for it, man, because he does all these crazy things to see what it's doing, and it's like it gives you great ideas. Watching it starting to play with gas, that's pretty relevant and we're a world right now where cheap gas is going down with like just an echo and an arc to say oh i'm gonna hold it down well it's like well what if my gun guns are beating the hell out of that and i'm gonna get to get a 57 because you didn't get to my generator fast enough mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah all right um how about you, Tess? It, was it was it to me? Okay, do we wrap everything up from you <laughs> for your thought? Yeah, you're good, buddy. Go ahead. All right. Well, um, I mean, as far as my lessons learned goes, so Reva on defense has to be part of a gambit. Um, it means that I won't be doing it always, especially when I rotate, I think, between three different solutions for Saw. Because you expect to see Saw... They know it, I know it, and I can play around that. Uh, that's why it's so upsetting the couple of times I've had it pulled on me where they, they yoinked DTMG and saw off defense, and I'm, and I'm hungering for them, I'm looking for them, and then I open up that, that back wall, and it's like, they're not there. Crap, what do I do now? So uh, I guess what I'm saying is I, I have to be careful with um with Riva because that's kind of, that's one of the the few linchpins I can put in defense. Treya on defense I did once this week. Treya Nihilus uh Talon, that's one I haven't run in a while cuz I had DRBS uh BSF Savage parallel with it. It drew like I want to say a 55 so a couple banners something like that. Um, in this meta where a lot of folks, especially folks like uh, the guys that we're fighting on a routine basis, know their efficiency game very well. So if you can't always do a trap, uh, just default back to leaning into your crons and thinking about what strips banners. Try and go for them. Because what you what you can't be doing is being sloppy on offense. So, you know, I took the, the punch early learning about things like uh, Treya versus Kel doesn't work on the punch-up. Uh, Bounty Hunters versus, uh, you know, um, Tuscans without them having the Tuscan crown. So even with Dao, and even running a Bounty Hunter crown that's not really super depending on bonus turn meter or healing or a lot of stuff like that, yeah, it still wasn't working. So... Still got to be conservative because people are going to tighten up those one or two teams that they dropped on you this week. It won't be it won't be happening a lot. Um, as far as daggers takeaways, Sidious and Bane are absurd, unnecessary, and a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, I, I I no notes on that. Amen. For sure. For sure. Uh, final thoughts, guys. All right, last note for the people. Um, I'll, I'll rattle off daggers here first, and we'll rotate around. Um, you know, he said, Tass's hat is stupid, and we need a sub-goal for his broke ass to get a new one from Etsy. TJ, don't let Tass skip the final thought. All right, TJ, bear witness. I, I behaved honorably with, with daggers. Oh, I was waiting, because if you didn't, BS. I was going to bring it up anyway. So nope, it's, it's that, that's, second that's fine. Get this that's man fine. a sub-goal and get this man another hat. I faced the him. music. All right, we, we've covered Dagger. All right, TJ, your final thought for the people. St- um, I, week two is is a more intense week one, in my opinion. I think you need to go back. If you have time, right? The, like, Taz has VODs, uh, which I, and, and he actually does the extra step of uh, doing the highlights. Go watch him. I, I think people need to really be observant. There's a lot to learn. GG is going to be just like a plethora of just great details and information about things because we have a Saw, which is a monster team, right? We have Beck, which is a monster team right now. These are just like, I can't underestimate and I have to account for it now. We have these other ones, BKMs and other things that have tricky setups. It's like they're playing with the field. Study, study, mm-hmm. study, make changes. Don't. Don't just walk in. Like, I walked in with certain things. I had to change so much up because I faced tasks and, and got my ass whooped because I did not follow points. And I took for granted, which is always happens to everybody, you take for granted what you think is one thing and it's not. Mm-hmm. I made a lot of adjustments. Like, 
we're talking I added 40% more offense to my Holdo crime because of what Tass did. He did 30, fuck him, I get 40. Because it was so good of a thought that it had to be the piece where it's like, what really killed me? That offense hit on his already well-modded characters got to be a piece to take into account. So it's like, you're not only modding, you're also doing DC. So it's like, damn you, CG, because it feels these are really good and they're yeah. doing a lot. So it's like study everything, see where you can make changes. If you can reroll stuff, reroll, remod, just just do your homework. This week is gonna be, I'm just like holy hell. What week one was this? Week two is gonna be an even more intense. This. That's fair. Very fair. All right, Sasha, your final thought yeah. for the people. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a, a, a piggyback or kind of a sibling to what TJ was saying, because I think he's exactly right. There's a lot of great research to be done. There's a lot of good content out there. Mm -hmm. um, my suggestion to folks, I know most people don't scout their opponents, but if, if you were going to, I actually think this is the context for like this, the type of environment where it can be really impactful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uncertainty out there, right? And I think almost all of us is, that are competitive GAC players, we are grasping for certainties. We are looking for things that we know will work. And we want to be able to check a few of those boxes. So I think for many of us, like if you take a look at our histories from week one, and you see things that worked multiple times, mm -hmm. for an opponent, you can probably trust they're going to do the exact same thing against those options if you were to set them. Mm -hmm. And you can use that in a kind of jujitsu form against them, right? Like if you know that, like you, you think about a few things you'd love to be able to remove from their counter box, their options, optionality for the back wall, you can probably devise a front wall that is going to draw all of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think almost more reliably now than in a well-established meta because there's not a lot of certainty and people will gravitate to what certainty they have. So that would be my little suggestion is if anybody wanted to spend the time, I don't always do it, but sometimes I find it a lot of fun to try and get in the head of an opponent. And this is a, an environment where it can be really impactful. Yeah, very fair. Uh for for my own part, yeah, if you were if you were trying to win in week one, but you were still trying to gain some intel, then you took maybe only a couple of risks. Uh, and if you had difficulty uh, this week, it was probably sweating over how to make sure you did actually one shot everything because I didn't one shot a whole board um, this week. And so the the difference of the the one two, is something everybody's looking at. So think about, I mean, think about what you actually dropped on, on attack or what you struggled with. Um, and now that conquest is over, this first, iter uh, this first run of set 14 conquest is done. So take stock of what you've got, um, play to your strengths data crumb wise. And when I say that you want to make sure that you have adequate stuff for offense, but where the fun is and where you can pull banners and very likely, very potentially a hold is using the power of these data crons. Um, You know, the old matchups, the rote matchups, people know how to play for. So mix it up with what you've gained here from set 14. Um, gosh, I mean, just that thought uh, from Sasha on the offense cron on, uh, on Tuscans. I'm really, I'm really scratching my head thinking about whether or not I actually have a dark side offense crown that good, but I'm, I'm hoping I do because that's exactly the kind of strength I'm talking to play into uh, in week two. Um, that's about it. So thank you, you know, Sasha, TJ, as always, making the time for our show. Appreciate the heck out of you guys. <sighs> time to close up shop. Um, yeah, so if you want to catch me on Twitch, I stream on twitch.tv forward slash Tassinix. Um, the way to find out, you know, when I'm going to stream live is to be on my Discord. Look for the link here on my channel. It's also in the info on this video. Um, all my links are on, on my videos, so you'll, you'll find what you're looking for there. 
Of course, if you enjoy this podcast, you can catch up on previous episodes, um, you know, right here on this channel. I also have a Datacron Set 14 video I made recently here with Aesop Rock, one of the, you know, top, you know, two, five play one to five players in the game, depending on any given week. But really, just generally not outside of that. Great video, uh, lots of awesome feedback from you guys. Thank you so much for all of that. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and of course, you know, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support me, you want to support the stream, check out my pa uh, my Patreon. Let's see, let me pull that right up. Patreon.com forward slash Tassinix. For every and any upwardly mobile GAC player, there is something to benefit from there. At the $5 tier, you get your foot in the door to Tass House. You get uh, early access to all of my uh, YouTube content, including plotting and scheming. Um, so general release is every Friday during the, the GAC season, and for patrons, you get it Monday or Tuesday morning, depending on, you know, our schedule for actually getting it done. Um, but those few extra days early can be the difference between being prepared for a new week of GAC, making a couple extra changes there before lock, something to benefit from. Uh, at the $10 tier, you get a bundle that includes access to OmegaBot Patreon, so if you're a fan of seeing me do my uh, you know preamble at the start of the stream. I do break down a, a bot report that goes into my opponent's tendencies on defense and offense. It's just a fantastic tool. Can't say enough good about it. At the top tier is uh, the bundle that is both Omega Bot and Hot Utils. So Hot Utils really doesn't need a lot of selling. It's just the premier um, inventory loadout management tool for the game. Uh, just makes a lot of different background management aspects a snap. Can't say enough good about that one either. All right, let's thank the patrons themselves that make all of this possible. Appreciate the heck out of you guys here at VIP Access. Thank you goes out to White Wolf, Sam Vimes, Jobin4527, Stark Strategy Gamer, Renee Bebe, Deadpool Cow28, Johnny B. Ottawa, JJ's Productions Twitch, Sweens14, Darth QPPMG, Ray's Malvis, and Brock Thud Steel. At VIP Access Plus, thanks to Trevor Boy Gaming, Striker, and Esh Sotnikam. I appreciate you guys enjoying that Omega Bot. VIP Access Premium, thank you to Quig, Ibanek, and Sir Boss, all enjoying the Double Bot Bundle. At the top of the heap, in, uh, in the secret ranks, the yet unreleased ranks, we recognize the one and only Nomad's Reaper. Absolute top of the heap uh, has just been pushing the hype trains along for the last, uh, gosh, year plus now. Incredible support. Just couldn't, uh, couldn't thank you enough, man. It's made a huge difference in where the account's been able to go over time. And uh, yeah, love you for it, man. All right, let's move to the special thanks to Yoda Force, one of my earliest supporters. Bought me the mic I'm speaking to you on right now. He has long since quit the game, but we remember him fondly from the other side. To Mrs. T, my wife, thank you for, uh, as we speak, you know, keeping our very industrious, very curious daughter out of my hair while I attempt to record some content for YouTube. Appreciate you so much. To Dagger, TJ, Sasha Isha, my co-hosts here on Plotting and Scheming. You know, we're all busy guys. It is a challenge for us uh, to make the time in our work and family schedules to produce this show, but we somehow get it done regardless. Couldn't do it without you guys. Appreciate the hell out of you. All right, guys, we come back here to the main scene, and yeah, uh, I'm, I'm tickled. I'm tickled going into this week. I, I really didn't expect how much... I was going to enjoy attacking this week, thinking that it was going to be a continuation of the same really bone... I don't know. It was a more bitter feeling efficiency. This was more fun. I feel like I had more of a degree of freedom as opposed to just a glut of attack because the new Crons opened up new options but also narrowed a few things too. So the, the net effect was super fun. Anyways, guys, see you out there. Uh, catch you next week. And until next time, it's been real. It's been awesome. It's been real awesome. Take care.